Hello. Welcome to the lesson Spatial Data Infrastructure Concepts. My name is Jorge Gustavo from Minha University. Today we'll discuss some introductory concepts about spatial data infrastructure. It is our first lesson on the subject. We'll not go deeply on these concepts for now. Our goal is to get acquainted with the term SDI. Infrastructure are basic services, assets and facilities service serving of a country, a city or even an organization. Even if we don't see them, these infrastructure are supporting our daily life. It includes hard infrastructure like airports, roads, bridges, tunnels, water supply, telecommunication, electrical grids. It also includes soft infrastructure such as health, education, financial and legal systems. Both are essential to the economy and quality of life. Two factors have contributed to the emerging of SDI. The great availability of geospatial data, the high cost of localization systems like uh, global navigation satellite systems. These high costs could not be paid by the private sector. Having lots of information wasn't enough. As soon as we started to have many geospatial data providers, the problem started. Sometimes it's not easy to find, or it is not in the format suitable to all processing needs, or it might not fit the purpose needed, or it might not be available when needed, or it might lack a proper license to let us know the allowed usage. Or sometimes the information is only available to selected bodies or users. The great availability of geospatial data, the high cost of core data and the limitations mentioned were recognized by governments and many of them start developing spatial data infrastructures in the 90s. In the United States, a National Spatial Data Infrastructure Initiative was started in 1993 to provide standardized access to geographic information resources. How we define a spatial data infrastructure? Let's consider three different definitions of SDI. The first one, the technology, policies, standards and human resources necessary to acquire, process, store, distribute and improve utilization of geospatial data, services and other digital resources. This first definition highlights the components of an SDI and their purpose. This second definition gives more importance on the coordination and flow of information among the stakeholders. It says, SDI is fundamentally 
about facilitation and coordination of the exchange and sharing of spatial data between stakeholders from different jurisdictional levels in the spatial data community. The third definition says SDI provides a basis for spatial data discovery, evaluation and application for users and providers within all levels of government, the commercial sector, the non-profit sector, academia and by citizen in general. This last definition refers to SDI as the basis where services and all users and providers can meet. These three definitions agrees on the existence of several interrelated components with specific roles within the SDI. If we understand the SDI as a process which will be implemented in different places of the world, at different pace, in different ways, with very different budgets and stakeholders, it will be difficult to write a single statement of the exact meaning of all SDI. For example, social, organizational and cultural culture issues are enough to make two SDI different. We can adopt one SDI definition, but we know that it might not cover all SDI initiatives around the world. In the next lesson, we'll continue to define an SDI from its components. The SDI itself will be how these components are articulated to support an SDI. Spatial data infrastructure plays a crucial role in areas such as planning, managing geological resources and energy, agriculture, land use, etc. Let's see some application examples that benefits from the existence of an SDI. Location-based services. This is a huge opportunity for business nowadays. These services require a lot of interoperable services contribute to the final application that can run on a mobile phone. Health mapping. Good health services are really important for our quality of life. With a proper SDI, we are able to end phenomena like pandemic bird flu or outbreak of SARS, even, this, even if these phenomena go from country to country. Food and agriculture became highly technological and we are able to produce much more food than before. But with a proper SDI, we can support comprehensive assessment of environment conditions and monitoring food security for the benefit of all and of the environment. Finally, let's see two less important areas in terms of business but very important regarding our quality of life and our planet resources. These two SDI applications are disaster management and environmental protection. For those less familiar with these areas, 
disaster management can have two complementary perspectives. One relates with risk management and another relates with risk reduction. Disaster risk re management refers to the systematic process of using administrative directives, organizations, operational skills and capabilities to implement strategic st strategies, policies and improving coping capabilities in order to lessen the adverse impacts of hazards and the possibility of disaster. Disaster risk reduction refers to the concept and practice of reducing disaster risks through systematic efforts to analyze and manage the causal, causal factors of disasters, including through reduced exposure to hazards, lessened vulnerabilities of people and property, wise management of land and the environment, and improved preparedness for adverse events. In our exercises, students are asked to investigate these applications further. It will be left as a self-study. Environment protection is another activity that can only succeed if supported by a proper SDI. Here we took the OECD broad definition of environment protection, but in this course we are mostly concerned about the landscape and ecosystems. Let's review the main topics of our lesson. All around the world, governments provide infrastructure of various, various kinds, such as road networks or, or public health, essential to the economy and quality of life. The great availability of geospatial data, the high price of core geospatial data, and the limitations on its usage by the lack of agreements contribute to the development of SDI started in the 90s. We defined SDI as a process based on agreements on policies and technology standards supported by institutional cooperation that guarantee the availability and usage of geospatial information by all stakeholders. SDI enables business and has a very important economic perspective. Under the scope of this course, we ended by discussing the importance of SDI for better risk management and reduction and to preserve natural resources and the existing natural environment. Feel free to search our resources folder and take advantage of the additional literature available there. Thank you so much for your interest and attention.